Good evening, folks. I'm Zach Cassagoon, and tonight I would love to talk with you all about Vilni Inc.'s Icar of the Damned enamel wash and how to paint Grimdark to a tabletop standard. But before we get started, let's check on the Vilni Inc. updates and get you all called up on the current information. So before we can ship the pre-orders out, we have to attain the SDS forms for our products. Once we have these, all the proper authorities will have them on file. The bottles and the packaging will indicate necessary hazard markings and we can begin shipping. The professionals that are drawing these up for us took a holiday from mid-December until January 9th, so there has been a bit of delay there, but I expect the forms any day now. Also, I'm happy to announce that the Vilni Inc. limited edition bottles are finally on the web store, so if you pre-order these, head over to the Grimdark Compendium and spend your campaign credits. As a reminder, each bottle is handmade by Dark Ages Workshop, and no two bottles will be alike. And yes, you can also pick these up even if you didn't pledge for them during the campaign. However, they are limited to a hundred, so once they are sold out, they are gone forever. And finally, make sure to keep an eye on your emails this month as we will be delivering all the digital assets like the STL files and Grimdark Compendium memberships that were associated with the Villainy Inc.'s Founders Campaign. Alright guys, so that is all for the Villainy Inc. updates for now, so let's get into this week's episode and see what it's all about. So for Tabletop Standard, I know everyone does it a little bit differently, so let's break down how I personally approach it to keep the painting process for Tabletop Standard as straightforward as possible while still producing a quality miniature. There are just four steps that I will follow and those are base coloring, adding a quick and dirty enamel wash, following that with a filtering pass, and then finishing with extra details. And I'll explain what I mean by extra details later in the video. So I'm going to break down each of these steps for you, starting with base coloring. When it comes to base coloring, I'm going to choose a few, usually three to four colors to use for the entire miniature. And the way that I approach applying these colors will vary from miniature to miniature. Typically, I'll advise that basing out the entire miniature is the correct path, but not in some situations. So sometimes I'm basing out everything on the miniature before moving on to the next step. And then sometimes I'm only basing out just parts of the miniature, doing the following steps, the enamel wash, the filter pass, and then coming back to finish basing out the rest of the miniatures in details at the end of the paint job. I get asked why I only base out certain parts of the miniature by people who watch my tutorials all the time. Of course, doing it this way is nuanced, which is why I generally recommend basing everything out first. I will give some examples of why I sometimes only base out major forms of a miniature like the armor and cloth, while leaving other details in the primer color and left to be painted later. For example, on this particular miniature, I'm only basing out the main articles of clothing in the wrap of the handle and then leaving the rest of the miniature unpainted while applying my enamel and unifying wash. There are two reasons for this. One, I want to avoid basing out the flesh and then covering it in a super dark enamel wash. Icar of the Damned is just not suitable for a unifying flesh wash, so it's better to leave it the primer color, paint it later, and then use a more appropriate colored wash. Now, if I were using a different unifying wash like Goons Grime or Karen Crimson, then sure, I would base out the flesh before the next steps. The second reason is due to the nature of how the filtering pass works. This is normally the third step. A filter is usually applied with an airbrush and removed with a reductive technique using either mineral spirits or alcohol, depending on the medium you used. On this particular miniature, I'll be using an acrylic filter that I will be removing, which can cause a few issues. One issue is that if I base out all these tiny details of the necklace before filters, then I'm probably just going to have to repaint or touch them up because I didn't want them to be filtered. I want the filter color only on the cloth. Also, the alcohol removal technique is highly volatile and I risk removing the base colors back down to the primer or even the plastic. So I will just avoid all these possibilities and cleanly paint those details later. So as I said, the idea of basing out only parts of the miniature before the unifying wash is pretty nuanced and this is why I generally recommend 
just basing out the entire miniature first, and eventually you will realize these nuances on your own. Moving now on to unifying washes, if you're new to this channel or have never used enamels for unifying washes, then I really hope this next section is an eye opener for you. For one reason or another, the industry standard wash in miniature painting is acrylic based, and I really have no idea why this is the case. It seems a little suspect to me, especially when you take a look at the Citadel paint system, which offers two approaches to standard painting. Now, the dry brush technique, as explained by Citadel, where you base a miniature, wash it, and then dry brush back over the wash to clean it up, it's not that bad. It's additive, so if you were to make a mistake by dry brushing over parts of the wash you didn't mean to, then you likely have to redo the wash and possibly even the dry brush again. Again, this approach to standard painting is not that bad, but easily approved upon with enamels. However, this layering system that is shown, it goes base color wash, layer one, layer two, or edge highlight, it's absolutely preposterous. You absolutely do not need two of those colors or two of those steps to get the final result. All you need is the base color and a wash that can be removed with a reductive technique or an oil or spirit based wash. The idea of applying and then removing a wash is an age old technique that has been around forever and I'm not sure why it is an industry standard for miniature painting, but that's why I'm here and that's why I created the Villainy Ink Enamels. Now for more advanced information and technique explanation, you guys should really check out the reductive technique video that we have here on YouTube. It offers a lot more than what I'm going to be explaining in this video for washes and the reductive technique. So for the enamel unifying wash step, it's really just apply it and then remove it. You can apply it with a brush or an airbrush, allow a few moments to dry or blow dry it, and then work it back off with a Q-tip or you can even remove it with a dry Q-tip. Once you master this, you will have a perfectly washed miniature every single time. Okay, now let's talk about the third pass of my process, the filtering pass. This is a simple and optional step that adds a whole lot to the miniature. It's so simple that it's pretty much standard in the way that I paint these days. In the Grimdark style, we are using this to add temperatures or filters to the model. We apply them with an airbrush and lightly glaze a temperatured shadow onto the miniature. In most cases, we tilt the miniature back and apply the glaze from the bottom up, catching the underneath of major forms or anatomy. These filters can either be left as is or reduced with alcohol or mineral spirits, depending on if we use acrylic or enamel. Of course, if we use enamel, we will use mineral spirits or white spirits to reduce it, and if we use acrylics then we'll be using alcohol to reduce filter back off. The best thing about these filters is they can be layered up and yes you can use enamel filters and acrylic filters in the same areas. Generally speaking it is a good idea to add your acrylic filter first and then your enamel filter since the alcohol will dissolve the mineral spirits but mineral spirits doesn't mess with the acrylics. Again this is an excellent way to add temperature or slight color variations to your model that's really simple and straightforward. Finally, the last step is the extra details that I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, of course, we are always going to be painting all of the details on the miniature during the base coloring phase, whether we do it all at the start or some parts at the start and the rest at the end. What I mean by extra details are simple things that we can do to add a little bit more to the miniature. In the case of this miniature, I added some simple little stripes to the clothing of the miniature. The stripes aren't perfect, nor do they need to be. I did them quickly just to add a bit more character to the overall scheme. There are all sorts of extra little things we can do like this to our miniature, whether it be something like these stripes or a simple OSL effect. We just want to do something to give the miniature an extra little pop. All right, so now that I've explained my process in full detail, let's take a look at how it works in action. 
When I began to paint this mausoleum, I decided on just four colors for the base coloring scheme. The stonework is going to be gray, of course, so the best thing to do here is to start with a primer color that can also act as the foundational color. In this case, Stonel Res Gray Primer. In standard painting, if there is ever an occasion where I can use a primer as the base color, then that is what I'm going to opt for. It's going to save steps and it's going to save some time. The roof of the structure will be based out with Tuscor fur from Citadel. The skulls and a few other details will be based out with olive flesh from Pro Acryl. And the bronze bits will be based out with light bronze also from Pro Acryl. Once our base colors have been applied and allowed to dry, I will now move on to the second step, which is the unifying wash. Here I'll be using Vilni Inks Icker of the Damned applied fairly heavily with an airbrush. Once this unifying wash is applied, I'll allow a little bit of time for drying or I'll better hit it with a blow dryer and then I'll move on to the removal pass. So the removal pass can be done either wet or dry. Here on the roof, I'm going to be using a cloth to clean the roof and other parts of the models that I can reach pretty easily with just a cloth and then I'll switch over to a Q-tip and mineral spirits for areas that are hard to reach or have lots of detail. As a note, dry removals or just simply wiping the enamel away with a dry cloth or tool will result in a darker wash. This is simply because less wash is being removed when we don't use mineral spirits. After our second step has been rendered, we will now move on to the filter pass. First, I'll do a quick filter with Icar of the Damned here at the bottom of the front part of the mausoleum just to add a little bit more dramatic shading. This will be slightly cleaned away with a dry Q-tip on the door and then I'll use a little bit of mineral spirits to clean more of the skulls around the door. I don't want those, I don't want those to be as dark. Then loading up our airbrush with Reichlin Flesh Shade from Citadel, I'll apply this to the bottom half of the mausoleum working one side at a time. As you can see, this breathes a whole lot of life into our color palette, giving us an awesome looking slight red hue to the miniature. So that is it for the painting. So that's base color, wash, filter, those three steps. After that, we are left with a spectacular result. This is going to look awesome on the tabletop. And now for the extra detail that I want to put into this little piece of terrain here, I'll make a quick base for it using simple materials and a simple process. The foundations of the base that I'll be constructing are pretty simple. One layer of plastic hard for the base and two layers of interestingly formed 1 4th inch cork board. Since this is going to be a modular piece of terrain, I don't want any straight edges here. So I took the time to cut out all the forms into an interesting shape and then glued them all together. I decided that I needed three layers just because I wanted to put in this little pathway that leads to the entrance of the mausoleum. It's a small, simple detail rendered with these little scale bricks. It took just a few minutes, but it will add a much needed contrast to the base once I texture out the rest of it. To do a quick couple passes of a texture on here, I'll lay down a thin layer of PVA glue and then sprinkle over top of it with what's called paver base. So this is a stone and dust mixture that you can find at most hardware stores. I only work this on some areas of the base though. I want to have as many variations of texture as I can get without overcomplicating the matter. So I'll apply this just around the steps and a little bit around the front of the base solidifying it by dripping ultra thin CA glue all over the top of it. The next variation of texture that I will add is a snow powder and I do apologize but I cannot recall where I got the snow from. It came in a kit of different sized white rocks and different textures of powder so if anyone recognizes it and knows where to get it feel free to let us know down in the comments. So. With the snow powder, I'll just be sprinkling it around the base, letting it build up in various thicknesses, and then locking it in with ultra thin CA glue. Once that is applied, that'll be it for the texturing, and we'll let that rest until the glue and glue vapor has fully dried and evaporated. The painting of the base is really simple, took just a few minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime it with Stinal Res Gray Primer and let it dry or blow dry it. 
Since the base is constructed into a broad area, the best way to apply the wash here is to just take Ikra the dam straight out of the bottle using the supplied dropper and dripping it right onto the base until there is enough there that I can just spread it the rest of the way out with a brush covering the entire surface. Once this is applied, I'll blow dry it, set it aside, and start mixing up a little PVA glue and water in a spare cup. To add some grass effects to the base, I'll lightly spread out that PVA glue I just mixed up onto the base, almost like a dry brush. I don't want to put too much glue on here because we want a sparse application of grass so that we can still see some of the texture work that we've done. If you put a lot of glue here and then apply the, the static grass to it, it's just going to be real thick clump of grass. And we, we don't really want that. We want it to be more broken up. After the glue is on, the grass is then applied with a static flocking dispenser and allowed to sit for several minutes to ensure that the glue will grab the flock. Once this has happened, it's best to use either a vacuum or an airbrush to remove the excess flocking. And really, the static flock dispenser will make it to where the flock stands upright and looks natural. So this is a tool that I highly recommend picking up if you don't have one. Once the static flock is applied and then allowed to dry, I'm going to do a quick painting of the pathway. It's really simple. I just used a mixture of browns and grays to kind of break up the color tones on the rocks, and that's pretty much it. So the basing that we did for the miniature that goes along with the terrain here was handled in almost the exact same way. So to build it, we just glue down a piece of quarter inch cork, add a little tombstone and a twig or two for detail, add the paper base, prime it gray, wash it black, allow to dry, and then glue the flock in a little bit of filter using sepia wash from Vallejo. Alrighty guys, so that is it. Rimdark tabletop standard. Heavily reliant on the reductive technique, which in my opinion is massively easier than most standard acrylic based techniques, except for maybe slap chop, but the fact that a black enamel wash applied and removed is the absolute best and probably most unheard of way to shade a miniature in preparation for slap chop speaks to both the enamel's usefulness in miniature painting and the greater community's lack of knowledge about the product. I mean, what if I told you about a technique that was basically slap chop, but kind of reversed? I mean, it just takes out the need for dry brush. You just prime the miniature white instead of black, and then apply a black enamel wash, remove it, and it's ready for paint. I have videos of me doing this from five and six years ago, particularly the Imperial Fist Dreadnought and some random miniature that I was painting showing the technique for how to apply washes. So maybe we'll talk about that next week, like a how to use enamels for an even quicker version of Slap Chop. If you agree, share this video around and help spread the word about Vilni Ink and Animal Washes. Make sure to give us a like, subscribe, and comment. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next.